Hey, who let you in? Welcome to the game chamber. Uh, well, actually, we're not in the game chamber today. We're in my very messy paint studio at home. And that's because I want to talk to you about something called Battle Foam. Battle Foam is an American company that offers really great storage and transportation solutions for your wargaming armies. I recently picked up a couple of their cases secondhand at a bring and buy. The cases themselves are also in really good condition. The problem is the inlay trays have all been teared open for the previous owner's army and they're not going to really fit my needs. Unfortunately it's quite expensive to get battle foam over the border here into Canada and whilst each individual piece of battle foam is actually relatively well priced it can start to add up a little bit when you're filling out a new box like this. And also and here's the really big factor I'm super cheap so I'm happy to save a few dollars by putting in a little bit of legwork and seeing if I can make some battle foam trays myself. First thing was to get the size of the current trays using a tape measure. Now don't worry if you're not replacing trays and you haven't got one to measure, the Battle Phone website actually lists all the sizes of the different trays they do. But in this case, we're talking 13 inches by seven and three quarter inches. Next up was the secret weapon, cubed foam. This is by Mastercraft. I picked this up at Canadian Tire, but pretty much any tool shop will sell this. It's used for putting tools into trays, or sometimes it's sold as camera foam or pluck foam. The whole sheet here cost me $10, and after a little bit of measuring, I realized I was gonna get two trays out of this sheet. Also, you're gonna need some regular good old terrain builder's favorite foam board. I'm using the good Elmer's stuff here, but you could quite easily use cheaper stuff. It doesn't matter. This is just what I had in the cupboard. Then using a rule and a black pen on black paper, yeah I know, I realised my mistake, I measured out the rectangle that we were going to cut. Using a hobby knife, we trimmed it all down and got a nice rectangular shape. And then using this one as a template, I cut out another one as well. I moved over to the kitchen table for a little bit more room and here was the main issue I had with this stuff. There's around about an inch that isn't cube cut all around the edge of the shape. So I couldn't just put the foam board to the edge and then make two cuts as it was going to mean an inch of the foam board on both ones was going to be pretty much useless. So instead, I found one of the pre-cut lines and used that as the edge on two of the edges of the foam board. And then it was just going to be a case of trimming it all down afterwards. So once I decided which line is going to be the edge, I proceeded to rip it apart. So the best thing about this cube foam, all you have to do is give it a little tug and you'll start to rip it to bits. Just be careful though that you don't rip lines that you don't want because there's no real easy way of undoing it. Once I got them cut to size, it was a case of just using the glue gun. As always, when we use a glue gun here, we need to tell you never use a glue gun, they're terrible. For some reason, the footage of me using the glue gun didn't work so here I'm using a finished product to pretend that I'm doing it. Seriously the thing's not even turned on. Once the foam board was stuck to the foam something heavy was needed to wait down for a little while. Luckily my wife's a big nerd and has these heavy textbooks lying around everywhere. I gave it an hour to dry but I don't really think it necessarily needs that long. And then using an extending utility knife I cut down the excess on each of the sides. There might be a cleaner way to do this. Maybe a hot wire would make a nicer job of this cut. I'm not really sure. I've not really used one much. But service over style is definitely the idea with this build. It's all about making it cheap and getting your armies out there. This one don't really look pretty. Last thing to do is test that the minis fitted in them. Looking good, you little gross plague marine. And that the trays fit into the box, which again, they did perfectly. So, was it worth it? Well, an uncut sheet this size that fits my sword bag, for me to get it from Battle Phone Direct over the border into Canada is gonna cost me about $40 in Canadian fun box. For my own made one, the cube foam cost $10 and I've managed to get two out of a sheet of that. And I've used about $2 worth of foam board. I'm pricing the foam board up like I'm gonna use the rest because I will, but I'm not sure whether the off cut of the cube foam is gonna be really useful, so I'm not pricing that in. I guess the glue out the glue gun is like 50 cents or whatever, but overall I'm calling this a $7 build. $40? $7. The $40 looks a little nicer. Obviously, it's neater finished. There's a nice little emboss on the back there. But functionally, this is identical. It's basically the same material. It's just finished a little bit nicer. Now, Battle Phone do do free shipping, but you have to spend over $300 US, which would be pretty tough to do if you just wanted to buy trays. But saying that, they do do a range of thicknesses. This is for two inches that I've built today, which is pretty much the only thickness you can easily pick up of the Q-Foam raw but they go right up to like three, 
four inches. I've got an unfinished one here from Battle Foam for your larger models, which is pretty useful. And a lot of people are now moving over to like magnet trays, basically metal sheets, and each model has a little neodymium magnet in the bottom. Neodymium? For me personally, this will work fine. And not only was it less than half the price, less than a quarter of the price even really with shipping, I've been able to make it in a day, whereas I'm not waiting three to five weeks with Battle Foam. Battle Foam's a great product. I love their bags. I love their trays. But if you want to save a few dollars like me, you can probably have a go at making this yourself. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed it, don't forget to click the like button. It really does help. And for loads more wargaming, D&D, and other awesome content, keep it here with a subscribe to the Game Chamber. Although this isn't the Game Chamber. This is just my house.